Welcome back to my channel guys. I put together a review for Parkinson's disease, also referred to as PD for short. And I wanted to continue our neurodegenerative disorder videos since I started some of them a while back and didn't get to finish. So here is my overview. I feel like it's pretty straightforward. So let's begin. So as I said, Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder and it is progressive. Basically what happens is it affects our dopamine producing neurons in our brain, specifically in our substantia nigra and our basal ganglia, which both have to do with our voluntary movements and coordination. So you can see I drew a not so great brain just to show you where these two are located. So since our dopamine production decreases, it causes difficulty with motor skills, stability, cognition, as well as difficulty initiating movement, which makes sense because it's the parts of our brain that control movement. So I wrote on the top as a kind of pun mnemonic device that Parkinson's disease is not a walk in the park. So park for Parkinson's because it's very difficult to walk at the park if you have a, you know, later stage of Parkinson's. So that might be an easy way to help you remember that Parkinson's is related to movement by thinking about your motor ability at the park. So some key signs of Parkinson's are tremors, specifically a pill rolling tremor. A pill rolling tremor is the motion of you rolling a small pill between your fingertips. This is a tremor that's specifically associated to Parkinson's disease, but that doesn't mean that that's the only kind that an individual with Parkinson's can have. They can have other types of tremors. Bradykinesia is another big sign, and this is a fancy word for saying slow movement. And this goes back to how it becomes very challenging to initiate movements. So if you've ever met someone with Parkinson's, a lot of the times they have a hard time getting out of a seated chair. Was Once they sat down, then there's a lot of effort to get going. And so there's some counting and some rhythmic swaying. And that's really what gets their body going just to get that initiation to get up. So a lot of their movements will appear very slow. We also see a lot of muscle rigidity and as well as our balance, gait, postural instability being impacted. I also included some other um, things that people with Parkinson's notice, and that's restless legs, sleep difficulties, as well as constipation, and also difficulty with like bathroom routine. So uh, later we'll talk about it, but avoid schedule to help patients with Parkinson's will help them to not have accidents as well. There are five stages to Parkinson's, so I'll start with the first one, which is very mild, and this is when an individual still is able to live at home, which is why I drew a little house icon on the side, and they're able to do their daily living skills, and at most, they're just going to have unilateral tremors, so it's just one-sided if they do have some kind of tremor impacting them. But the difference between stage one and stage two is that when you get to two, the symptoms become bilateral. They're still able to live at home, as you can see, but the tremors become on both sides and as well as the rigidity. So this is when you see walking problems as well as poor posture, and that becomes much more apparent at stage two. So when we get to the mid stage, we're at stage three now, we're still living at home by ourselves, but our balance is decreasing, our, sl our slowness is increasing, and our fall risk is increasing as well. So this is when eating and dressing typically start to get more impacted. By stage four, I drew it around with a red circle for four and five to indicate stop. So what happens here is at stage four, we are no longer able to live by ourselves. We need support. So our activities of daily living needs assistance, and we are going to have a very hard time standing without assistance at this stage as well. Stage five is when the individual is at total dependence. So it's likely that they will have a 24 hour caregiver or nurse 
and um, they are typically either in a wheelchair or in bed for their final stage. The population that Parkinson's disease impacts are older individuals around 55 to 60 years of age. That's typically the onset for majority of people, but 5 to 10 percent have early onset disease before age 50. And this is often linked to a gene mutation, but not always the case. So overall, it's just a random selection of people in their early 60s. For the prognosis, there is no cure. But the good news is that even though it is progressive, it does not typically impact life expectancy. One of the big takeaways for treatment is to remember that the medication L-DOPA is related to Parkinson's. So just drill into your head that Parkinson's disease decreases your dopamine production. So you need a medication that's going to increase your dopamine production. So meds such as L-DOPA is going to improve the dopamine production in your brain, um, and that's going to help with our movement. Other medications that decrease tremors and involuntary movement also exist that some patients might have success with as well. I also noted that there is something called deep brain stimulation called DBS, and this is when um, you go through a procedure where the individual has electrodes placed into their brain, and this connects to a device in their chest that helps with their movements that are impacted by Parkinson's. So that might be a treatment that someone may undergo. To wrap up, we're going to talk about the OT treatment. So right away, I think about energy conservation. How can we make their environment and accessing things easier for them? And also that ties in with ADL retraining and adaptation. So are there things we can do to make their daily living tasks easier? Can we put their um, you know, workload on a certain schedule? We also could do avoid schedules so that they can remember to use the bathroom throughout the day and not have any accidents or any difficulties accessing the bathroom on time. And also, we want to look at adaptive equipment, which can be really useful for mealtime, especially if you have tremors and it's hard to get utensils to your mouth. So I have used uh, weighted spoons or even spoons that are curved so that people don't have to use as much range of motion to get a scoop of food into their mouth. So there's a lot of new technology and a lot of equipment that we can refer to our patients that maybe dealing with those tremors and having difficulty with their daily living skills. Uh, also, you can see a lot of new tools and strategies, again, adaptive equipment in the communication realm as well. Pain management is a big one because the rigidity can be very painful. So when I was working with older adults, I remember they were coming in for, you know, paraffin wax and um, heat modalities. Gentle range of motion can help as well as splinting if you see that that is a need. Safety training for mobility is really important, and I think this goes back to home modification and adaptation to make sure that where they're living, they have access to all the floors and that there's not as much fall risk. We have to educate them on keeping the hallways clear. I mentioned this earlier, but counting and rhythmic strategies tend to really help people with Parkinson's for movement. So I'll count like one, two, three while we sway back and forth, or maybe we count to 10 before we actually do the movement. So it helps the person kind of get into this rhythm and that initiation tends to be a little faster when we do that kind of count off. And I've seen success with that as well. I just finished editing this video and then thought of this very silly mnemonic device, so I decided to add it really quickly. So here is Brady, who is at the park, and he's moving around, running around in his L-DOPA shirt. So Brady Kinesia is slow movement. We have Parkinson's for park, and Brady is wearing his L-DOPA shirt, so we take L-DOPA medication to support our slow down movement. That happens because for Parkinson's, our dopamine production decreases, making movement harder. I think Parkinson's disease was a lot faster to review, so I hope this was helpful and informative. I will see you guys next time. Take care.